Welcome to the Rise Up For You podcast, where thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and executives from around the world share their practical tips, strategies, and stories to help you unleash your potential and achieve your goals. Your journey of growth to become your best starts now. Hey there, welcome to the Rise Up For You podcast. Before we jump into today's episode, if you're new to our podcast, to our YouTube channel, I'll let you know that we do not run any paid advertisement or sponsorship. This is all about educating you and empowering you with amazing content. But all we ask is that if this episode resonates with you, if you enjoy it, if you really feel something from it, please share with your friends, your family, your leaders, your coworkers. Here at Rise Up For You, we're all about spreading the message and we want to see our YouTube channel and our podcast continue to grow. So share the wealth, spread the message and enjoy this episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rise of You podcast. This is your host, Nedalina Nasruddin, and I am super excited to bring another amazing guest today. And we're going to talk about my favorite topic, as you know, which is all things soft skills and communication. So please help me welcome our amazing guest today, Ty Hosgen. I said that right. Yes. <laughs> you nailed it. That was perfect. Welcome, Ty. How are you today? I'm doing excellent, Neda. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So we always love to start off the episode by letting our audience get to know our guests. And I typically throw it back to you because I love it when our guests kind of brag about themselves. So tell us a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and what got you into this industry of communication and soft skills. Absolutely. So I teach professionals and companies how to communicate more clearly and more confidently so that they can not only become stronger, more influential leaders, but also form deeper relationships, get more respect, and ultimately be more profitable if it's a company and advance their careers if it's an individual. Yeah. So I actually was not born a classic extroverted outgoing individual. And so I actually started learning about communication out of necessity because I was so bad at it, so anxious, so nervous around other people. And so the classic introvert to now teaching it for a living so now I've coached hundreds of professionals, all sorts of companies. So it really goes to show that anyone can learn this and it's truly a skill that can be developed. 100%. So before we jump into like some of the strategies around it, because you're speaking our language, you know, Rise Up For You. I mean, that's all we do is, you know, soft skills with companies and, and individuals. What got you into this industry? So I know you said you were naturally an introvert, but what kind of gave you that aha moment of, you know, I'm going to be a communication coach? For me, it was seeing all the progress that I had made from starting so low, especially in the professional world. Yeah. starting from a pretty dark place of anxiety and not even being able to ask someone about their weekend now slowly progressing learning to the point now where okay my career is growing i'm now having great relationships better social life so it got to a point where i was very successful on paper purely from building my communication skills and so i was teaching it to others in various leadership positions throughout my different jobs but eventually it kind of got to the point where I realized teaching this skill to others was my true passion and that the other stuff wasn't really that stimulating or mm -hmm. meaningful. Mm -hmm. So it kind of started as a side hustle initially, and then it just seemed so natural to pursue it full time and best decision I ever made. I like what I, what I like about what you're saying is that it's not natural for you. And oftentimes, and I don't know if you see this Ty, but a lot of times when we work with companies and individuals, we hear the excuse of, well, you know, my Myers-Briggs tell me, tells me that I'm da 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 da. I'm an introvert. And so naturally I'm, and like, you know, they use it as an excuse to kind of put themselves in a box as to why they can't communicate effectively or to why they have a certain energy. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in what you are saying is that maybe you started as an introvert, but you understood that this is a skill that you can build and then optimize, right? So learning when to be an introvert and when to be an extrovert. So what, like, what is a, I guess, a skill or a strategy that got you to first mentally, like get out of that mindset of, okay, even though I'm naturally an introvert, I still need to learn and build this skill. First of all, I just want to say, I feel so strongly about what you said about <laughs> putting yourself in a box with, I am a INTJ or yeah. whatever the acronym is for the particular person. 
Not that there's anything wrong with taking those tests. 100%. But if you're using them as a limitation, which a lot of people do, I'm this way. So therefore, I'm not very good at this. Yes. Oh, that, <laughs> I feel so strongly about that because there are people that have come from many, many disadvantages in all types of industries, circumstances throughout the world. Yeah. I think of a person who I saw a video of someone with no limbs who learned to drive a car with just like their shoulders and their mouth, like yeah. crazy things that humans can do. And as long as we have the belief that, okay, I might be this way now, but I can change that to me is, is where the power comes from. So I don't want anyone to look too much into those personality tests. hundred percent, hundred percent. So what would you say? Um, okay, let's, let's dive into the communication because communication is probably one of the biggest challenges that we deal with when we work with companies that they come, you know, the classic communication isn't working or this person's speaking to this person and they're not talking over here. And then like all the, these challenges occur, right? It's a very common thing, which is why we teach a lot of emotional and social intelligence, but what are, I would say, you know, cause I'd love to learn from you as well. What are some starting points and up leveling the communication. And I don't know if that's, if you want to start with the individual first or kind of talk to us about how you do it with companies, what does that look like for you? Yeah, this is a really important thing in terms of, we can just start actually from a really simple perspective, Yeah, let's do it. which is being a little bit more intentional with how respectful people are communicating with one another. And particularly in written communication, that's the majority of communication for a lot of companies, right? We were not always on phone calls, video calls, or in person. A lot of times we're sending messages on group chats, teams, emails, things like that. And so even just simple things like phrasing as much as possible, everything like a question. Mm -hmm. So instead of send me this information, I need you to do this. I need this by Friday. Little things like that, I've learned to create so much unnecessary animosity between groups and between people because everyone thinks that they're kind of being told what to do. Some people just hear it in a certain type of a voice, yeah. depending on their mood. So even being a little more respectful with the way that we're writing makes a big difference. Saying things like, would you mind sending this by this day? Would you please send this information? Is it possible to have this done by Thursday? Just phrasing everything as a question as much as possible. Just from implementing that, I've had companies see huge differences in company morale just because people feel like they're more respected, their time's more respected, and their peers aren't telling them what to do all the time. Yeah. And it's interesting as well that you brought up like the chat component, because especially in the last couple of years with COVID, many people have, um, they've moved from in-person as we know, even though that's shifting again today, but from in-person to Zoom to chat boxes, right? So, and you know, there's a lot of things that you miss in a chat box, just like you said. So being able to rephrase it in a question can make a big difference because if you miss a period or if you miss a comma, <laughs> The way somebody interprets it can be totally different than what you intended it, right? Um, and it's not necessarily about the intention, but more about the interpretation. So I love that. What other what other strategies? I mean, let's pivot here for a second because there's a lot of companies that are going back to in person too, and I think that that's a whole new challenge because people have forgotten how to socialize and build relationships in person. So now it's being able to have conversations not through a chat not through Zoom, not through an email. So what are some things today that you're seeing in person that we can implement? Yeah, we can definitely talk about how to increase a little bit more connection again, because that's something that's been a bit lost, especially in the last couple of years. So yeah. simple things, even like the types of questions that we might ask each other in a perhaps less formal setting mm. amongst teams. So instead of the usuals, how are you? How was your weekend? What are you working on? Things like that. Boring. People get asked those things thousands of times. So even just having a little bit more positive and connective conversation starters, mm -hmm. just something like, what was the highlight of your weekend? What was the best part of your week? Questions that can only be answered 
positively. So, well, what was the best part of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did yeah. you learn from this? What was the highlight? Because a lot of times, gossip, complaining, little remarks, stuff like that can really just be a pollution in the workplace. And this makes sure that the conversation really has to be positive because you're asking about the best part or the highlight. So yeah. even just changing the questions can make a big difference in morale. Yeah, that's a really good point because the amount of times I have asked, hey, how was your weekend? And I get, uh, you know, it was all right. <laughs> but that's saying, you know, what was the best part of your weekend? Then it, it kind of encourages them to focus on the positive side of things. And, you know, what's interesting is I like that you're giving some examples, too, because I know for our clients, one of the biggest things is that sometimes people just don't have the vocabulary, meaning they don't even like in their mind, they don't even know what kind of question can I ask, right? So now anyone that's listening to this podcast, you can literally write down the two or three statements that Ty just gave us. I call them back pocket phrases, right? Like you just kind of put them in your back pocket or you write them down. And now the next time you can say, okay, I'm, this is the question I'm going to ask. And after a while, it becomes more natural and organic. But I really, I like the twist and the reframe of asking a question that's going to encourage like a positive response. Not that we want to have toxic positivity, but it can like really help with the communication. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see when it comes to communication? Is it, is it confidence? Is it, like I said, not having the language? Is it vulnerability? Is it values difference? One of the biggest challenges I see is actually just being able to speak clearly and concisely mm -hmm. to avoid that miscommunication, especially in meetings. I'm sure we've all been in meetings where somebody's talking and then they keep talking and then they keep talking. Everyone's just kind of zoning out. And whether it's a leader of a team, somebody on the team, this doesn't really <laughs> contribute anything to the meeting. If nobody's listening, it doesn't even matter what you're saying. Yeah. So if you're talking for too long or your point isn't very clear, that's probably a challenge that I see at least, yeah, one of the most. And with that miscommunication, because not everyone always wants to chime in and say, what are you actually trying to say? What do you mean by this? What's your point? So a lot of times everyone just kind of goes along with it because they want the meeting to end. So being more intentional, speaking more concisely, saying less, here's my point, I think it, here's an example, then let's restate that point so it's really clear. Even just thinking of it in terms of a framework, so again, say your point, this is why you think it, here's an example to support it, then restate your point so it's clear. Having a bit more intention with being more concise, that is a huge, huge part of being a better communicator that not many people know how to do. Yeah, I love that. I, I call it trim the fat. <laughs> like, can we just trim the fat and like get to the lean part of the meat? Like, what? <laughs> but, but you're right. I mean, I, um, I encourage, well, and this is why I encourage public speaking for a lot of people, for professionals, which you probably do as well, Ty encouraging uh doing like a five minute talk right so get your point what is your point and now condensing it into a five minute keynote because it kind of forces you to examine all of the different layers that you might potentially want to talk about that aren't needed right so again it really trims the fat so that's that's a great point ty this has been awesome is there anything else that you want to leave us with before we jump into the power section of the interview any other strategy or something that you think is really important for our audience to know about communication Absolutely. So I do want people to really focus on their body language as well. I don't think that's thought about enough, especially if you're going back to the office more in person. Yeah, so even sure. just something simple, truly as the way that you're sitting in your chair mm -hmm. can change how people perceive you, how people respond to you. Yeah. So typically we don't often think about this. People are kind of slouching. They're just trying to be comfy, you know, half an hour into the meetings, everyone's kind of leaning back. Now, if you actually care about how people perceive you, and this can impact your ability to get the promotions and the raises and keep moving up, just simply keeping your posture nice and upright, shoulders down and back, keeping your head up, you know, your arms at your sides, even just keeping strong, confident posture will have a huge impact on number one, how you feel, right? Because if you 
can connect your body language to your state of mind. And there's a natural link there. It'll actually be easier for you to focus and stay awake in those meetings. And if you care about how people are perceiving you from a career standpoint, looking like more of a leader simply by setting up more straight is one of the easiest things you can do. Yeah, I love that. Ty, thank you so much for joining us today on the Rise of Free podcast. I want to jump into our power section. So I'm going to ask you just a couple rapid questions and then you'll respond with a rapid answer. So the first question we always ask is if you can leave the world with one final message, we call it our golden nugget. What would your golden nugget to the world be? Mm, this is a great question. Communicate with people as if it's the last time you're ever going to see them. That's a good one. That's a really good one, especially with family too. It's a great one. Second question is we're really big here at Rise It For You on values, like understanding our values, knowing who we are. We have non-negotiables around that. What's a value for you that's an absolute non-negotiable? For me, it's growth. I always want to be growing in some way. I really don't feel good about myself if I am not growing and if I am stagnant. So I personally believe growth is the key to a meaningful and fulfilling life. Yeah, I totally agree. So I got one more question for you. But before I ask, tell us how we can find you on social media, if we can learn more about you, where can we find Ty? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Ty Hosgen on the main social media. So I do a lot of LinkedIn, Instagram, and TikTok. I post a daily video on there. So just short bite-sized communication tips for anyone to learn. I love connecting with followers and interacting too. So feel free to send me a message, ask a question about anything you might've heard, or maybe tell us your favorite part of the episode. Would love to hear from you. And I'll also give away a quick little free training on video calls, which is pretty popular. And so you can get that on videocallstar.com. Beautiful. And then we'll put that in the show notes as well. Ty, thank you so much for joining. Final question. As you know, we're the company Rise Up For You. What comes to mind for you when you hear that phrase? Hold yourself to a very high standard and show up every day, putting in effort to become the best version of yourself. Yeah, I love that. Ty, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Nana. This was a lot of fun. Appreciate you for having me. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining the Rise Up For You podcast. Every single week, we bring you amazing experts, entrepreneurs, executives from around the world. They share their stories, their insights, strategies to help you be your best, your team, your organization. We're all about pushing your potential. So thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next episode. Ty, thanks again. Thanks, Linda. Imagine a life where you can have it all. A booming career, fantastic love life, great health and success, and overall achievement and happiness. Imagine pushing your potential to your absolute best and every day living a life that you are proud of. Well, if this sounds like something that you're yearning for, then the Rise of You Growth Membership is perfect for you. My team and I believe in supporting you and helping you get to the next level because we know that you can do and have what it takes to be your best. When you join our membership, you get access to live trainings every single month with myself and our team. You get free coaching. You get a number of on-demand resources to help level up your success that you can use in the comfort of your own home. And you get access to our global membership around the world full of like-minded professionals that are looking to be their best. Your time is now to push your potential and live the life that you wanna live. So if you're ready to take the next step in your life and in your career, join the Rise Up For You Growth membership. Click below and we'll see you there.